So in this lesson, we're going to look at the Nazi-Soviet Pact. This was an alliance or a pact signed between Germany and the Soviet Union in August of 1939. And it's quite surprising when you consider that Hitler was uh, an extreme anti-communist. So why did Stalin sign this non-aggression pact with Hitler? Well, some of the reasons lie with Stalin's communist beliefs. In the eyes of Stalin, there was no particular difference between fascism and the Western democracies. In his eyes, they were all evil capitalist powers and all potential enemies. He believed, as a communist, the communist theory said that a world war was inevitably going to come. The theory was that capitalist countries were greedy and aggressive and at some point, inevitably, they would go to war, a world war, fighting over markets and raw materials. Now, if such a world war was coming, and Stalin didn't see a particular difference between the fascists and the Western democracies, he wanted to make sure that they didn't gang up together against Russia. He wanted to make sure in any future conflict, Russia would be on the winning side for Russia's advantage. And he says as much in 1925. Should such a war begin, we will not be able to stand idly by. We will have to take part, but we will be the last to take part, so that we may throw the decisive weight on the scales, a weight that should prove the determining factor. So essentially, Stalin is saying there, if this world conflicts happen, we should wait a bit, see which side is winning, and join in on that side. In January of 1934, Hitler has been Chancellor of Germany for a year and he started his massive rearmament program. So Stalin is looking towards Germany and seeing this new power emerging and wondering about perhaps getting some sort of alliance with this new power. He's looking at friendship with Germany. He says in a speech he'll work with any country that doesn't directly threaten the USSR. In 1934 though, Hitler is not interested and rejects any proposals from the Soviet Union. So next, the USSR turns towards the League of Nations and collective security, hoping this will provide some sort of safety for the USSR. And in September of 1934, Russia joined the League of Nations. Now, if you remember, back when the League was formed, Russia was not invited to join the League, as the Western powers, Britain and France, didn't like the, 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 the communism, the communist theories of the Russian government. At this stage, though, in September of 1934, they are more worried about the rise of Germany, so they gladly accept Russia into the League of Nations as a potential ally against the rising threat from Germany. The Soviet foreign minister at this time was Maxim Litvinov, and it was his initiative, his idea, to build links with Britain and France and through the League of Nations. And hopefully then, Britain, France, Russia would be able to stand together against any possible future German aggression. Something that really alarms, that worries the USSR though, is the Western policy, Britain's policy, France's policy of appeasement. In Munich, if you remember, in 1938, the Allies basically dealt with Hitler, gave him some of the things he wanted, gave him the Sudetenland, and Russia was not invited to this conference. Stalin became very suspicious of the motives of Britain and France. They seemed to give Hitler things that he wanted, and he was worried that they had a secret aim, that Britain and France really wanted Nazi Germany to get involved in a war with the USSR and for those two powers to destroy each other, because he knew that Britain and France didn't particularly like either of these powers. He actually says this in a speech, Britain and France have rejected the idea of collective security and taken up a policy of non-intervention and neutrality. The policy of non-aggression is a way of encouraging aggression. Britain and France are encouraging the Germans to march east. They are just saying to the Germans, just start a war on the Bolsheviks and everything will be all right. So he makes that speech in March of 1939. Very suspicious of Britain and France after appeasement. It doesn't mean that the Soviets stop talking to the West, though. And Maxim Litvinov, he continues his efforts to get a, a, a treaty established between Russia, Britain and France. In the spring of 1939, it looks like Britain and France might be going to war with Hitler. 
In April of that year, of 1939, Litvinov proposes a treaty to Britain and France. He lays out a proposal for a Britain, a British, French and Russian alliance. It, however, takes six weeks for a reply to come. And Stalin gets the idea that the Western Allies are not really serious about an alliance with Russia. Remember, he's secretly worried that they want Germany to attack Russia anyway. He dismissed Maxim Litvinov, who he was worried was too friendly with Western diplomats, and appointed a new foreign minister called Molotov. Now, Molotov, then, is sent secretly to Germany. You can see Molotov talking to some German generals for secret talks in May of 1939. It doesn't mean at this stage that the USSR is definitely going to sign some sort of agreement with Germany, but they're, they're basically talking to both sides and seeing which, which is going to give them the best offer in the interests of the USSR. They do start making promises, the Germans at this stage, they say, look, if you're neutral, because it's looking like Germany is going to attack Poland to get Danzig back, if you're neutral, um, you could get more land in Eastern Europe if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're neutral in the future conflict. They're still talking, though. Uh, Stalin is still talking to the Western powers. He does know that Hitler is a sworn enemy of communism. And in August of 1939, British, French and Soviets meet in Leningrad to discuss hammering out a possible treaty. Now, the Soviets ask, well, if we're going to fight Germany, we're going to need to send our troops through Poland in order for them to get to Germany. Poland is very much against this idea, and the British and French say, no, you can't send your troops, Soviet troops, through Poland. Now, Voroleshov, the leader of the Soviet delegation, is very frustrated and annoyed by this. Are we supposed to beg for the right to fight our common enemy? Something else that annoys the Russians is that there are no senior ministers or top generals sent from Britain and France. So none of the British and French delegates have the power to sign a treaty. Any agreement would have to be sent back to London, sent back to Paris and, and discussed there. And talks break down on the 21st of August. On the 20th of August... Hitler sends a letter directly to Stalin. Dear Stalin, the tension between Germany and Poland has become intolerable. A crisis may develop any day. In my opinion, it is desirable for our two countries to enter into a new relationship without losing any time. I propose you receive my foreign minister in Moscow. He will have the fullest power to sign the pact. I should be glad to receive your early answer. Signed, A. Hitler. The very next day, Stalin replies to Hitler's offer. I thank you for your letter. I hope that the German-Soviet non-aggression pact will mark a decided turn for the better in the political relations between our two countries. Signed, J. Stalin. So Hitler's letter is different from the Western talks in Leningrad in a number of ways. Hitler wrote a personal letter directly to Stalin. This impressed Stalin that Hitler was serious about coming to some sort of agreement. These are high-level talks that Hitler is proposing. He's not sending junior officials with no power. He's talking about sending the German foreign minister, von Ribbentrop, to Moscow. And von Ribbentrop would have the full power to sign a treaty, again, unlike the British and French representatives. There was also another attractive part of the offer for Stalin. In it, in the so-called secret protocol... Stalin would gain a share of Poland and areas that Russia lost after World War I, the Baltic states of Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia, and the Ukraine. So let's compare the two offers. The British and French offer, if Germany attacked Poland, the USSR should join in with Britain and France in fighting Germany, although it's difficult to see how uh, the USSR could do that, as Soviet troops couldn't pass through Poland. So it does mean that According to the British and French offer, they're going to get involved in a war soon fighting Germany. If you compare that to the German offer, the non-aggression pact, Germany promised it wouldn't attack the USSR. And so consequently, there's no immediate prospect of war. Now, Britain and France do promise support if Germany attacks the USSR. But there's no extra land for the USSR in the British and French offer. If you compare that to the German offer, again, there's no immediate prospect of war. And the USSR gains eastern Poland, the Baltic states, and the Ukraine. 
So which of these two offers do you think looks more attractive to Stalin? Well, Stalin chooses to go with the German offer. In this picture, you can see the German foreign minister in Moscow, von Ribbentrop. He is signing the non-aggression pact, also called the Molotov-Ribbentrop pact, after the two foreign ministers. Behind Ribbentrop, you can see Stalin, and next to Stalin, the Soviet foreign minister, Molotov. So let's have a quick summary. So why did Stalin sign a non-aggression pact agreeing not to fight with a person who essentially is obviously his enemy, who says he hates communism. Well, in Stalin's communist beliefs, he doesn't see really much difference between fascist Germany and the other Western powers. They're all evil capitalists, and they're all going to inevitably come to a war anyway, so Stalin should simply choose the, the winning side. The policy of appeasement greatly worried Stalin. He seemed to think that the Allies were giving Hitler the things that he wanted and encouraging him to turn east and to attack Stalin and the Soviet Union. The British and French offer was very weak. There was no gain of land in it for Stalin and Soviet troops wouldn't even be able to march through Poland. The German offer, on the other hand, seemed very strong. A direct letter from Hitler, von Ribbentrop being sent out who could make a peace. No immediate prospect of war, so they're not going to get involved in, in a war soon and they also gain a lot of land, eastern Poland, the Baltic states, and the Ukraine. So there you go, that's some reasons why Stalin signed the Nazi-Soviet pact.